Colby, uh, you're looking very sharp. Welcome to London. Obviously, you weighed in ahead of tonight's main event uh, between Leon Edwards and Kamara Usman. Does that make you the number one contender? Are you expecting to, to fight the winner of tonight's main event? First off, I just want to say sorry to all you guys. Sorry to keep you waiting. Complicated business. Complicated business. But I'm ready to be tagged in tonight. I came here to fight for the world title. Uh, Dana White came, comes and tops it on my shoulder right now. I'm stepping in that cage tonight, and I will bring that belt back to America where it belongs. It'll be just like the war in 1776 when we defeated the English. I don't know if you saw, but Conor McGregor expressed his interest in fighting for the belt um, at 170. What do you make of that? And is that a fight that you'd like down the line, regardless if there was a belt on the line? You know, Conor's done some great things in this sport. You know, he's, he's a great fighter, but... You know, his time is passing. He's, he's made a lot of money, so he just doesn't have that same hunger and same drive that he used to when he first started fighting. You know, who knows what the deal with Connor, if, if he's coming back to fight anytime soon. You know, he still has to get in the USADA pool and do all the stuff that goes along with that. I'm ready to fight tonight, as you guys see. And I came here on one day's notice, cut 18 pounds, didn't cry about it, didn't make excuses. I'm the ultimate professional, unlike some other guys in my division. And, you know, I'm ready to fight today. I'm ready to fight tomorrow. I stay ready to fight. So... You know, if Conor wants to fight one day and do business, you know, it's probably the biggest fight the UFC would ever do. You know, as you guys see with the numbers this weekend that I've drawn to this event, these guys, these other idiots in the main event, they have no charisma. No one cares about them. No one wants to see them fight. I mean, their numbers are so bad, so abysmal. So I'm, I'm glad to come here and boost the ratings and, and bring some electricity into this O2 arena. Would you relish toe-to-toe -to -toe verbal warfare with Conor prior to a fight? And would you rather have that fight presented to you, if you got offered a title fight and a McGregor fight, would you rather go with the McGregor fight just because of the eyes, the box office, the money? You know, I'm here to do the biggest and best business for the UFC. This is not a game. This is a business. So we're here to, to make money, and I want to make a lot of money for the UFC. The UFC has changed my life in ways that I never thought possible. I love the UFC so much for, for what they've done for me. So I want to repay the favor. I want to do the biggest and best business for the UFC. If they want to sit down at the table and they think that's the biggest and best fight we can do, then, then let's do it. But, you know, I'm here to fight the biggest and best fights in this company, and you know, I'm just getting started. I haven't even hit my prime yet physically and mentally, and I feel like the best is yet to come, and, and you guys are going to see a new Colby next time I step in that octagon. Final one from me. Obviously, you are a character that guarantees pay-per-view buys, whether they love you or they hate you. But do you find, given that everything you brought to the sport in competition and outside of the cage, do you find a lot of people come up to you in the streets and say that they're big fans of you and, and like the work that you do inside and outside the octagon? Well, first part of the question, I'm not, I'm not a character. I'm just Colby Chaos Covington. You know, chaos is unpredictable. Nobody knows what I'm going to do. No one knows what I'm going to do next. That's why people tune in to, to watch me and, and see what I'm doing. So, you know, I, I walked down the street. I was probably in the street for five minutes, and, and 50 people were coming up to me wanting pictures, autographs, this and that. Anywhere I walk in America, it's the same thing. People are bothering me. They're, they're, they want pictures. They want autographs. These other two idiots in the main event, they walk down the street. Not one person out of ten people is going to recognize them. And there's a reason for that. Those guys can't draw flies to shit. They can't draw money with a green crown and a white piece of paper. So I'm here to save the division and make the UFC great again. Colby, right here in front of you. Uh, you said you flew out here on one day's notice. How long ago did the UFC approach you to be the backup? So uh, Hunter Campbell and Dana White had called me about three weeks ago, and they, they were like, hey, Colby, uh, just stay ready in case anything happens. We don't know. Someone could slip on a banana peel. Someone could get injured. Someone could miss weight. And just stay ready in case anything happened. I hadn't heard anything. Tuesday late night, about 10 p.m., Hunter Campbell calls me. says, hey, Colby, uh, we need you to come weigh in and be the backup fighter in London. I said, all right, let's do it. And so he flew me out Wednesday night, or Wednesday morning, and I got to London Thursday morning. I weighed 188 pounds. I had 18 pounds to lose in one day. Did you hear me cry? Did you hear me make excuses? No, I, I got to work. I, did, I was an ultimate professional like I am, and, and I made the weight. Who else can say they do that? No one does that. It's just it's unheard of. So I'm an ultimate professional. I proved to the UFC my worth and my value this weekend, and we're going to do the biggest and best business next. At the press conference, both Leon and Kamaru said they had no idea that you were even coming. So, A, do you believe that? And how, if so, if that's true, how did you and the UFC kind of keep this secret? Because I don't think anyone knew you were in town until you stepped on the scale. Yeah, the, the real reason, 
you know, it was kept a secret is because, you know, a lot of people in England, you guys like to quote Shakespeare, you know. In America, where I come from, we like to create, uh, we like to quote the great poet Lil Wayne. And just like Lil Wayne said, real G's move in silence like lasagna. Shout out, Wheezy. Uh, and earlier you had mentioned uh, some unprofessional fighters in your division. Who exactly you were, were you referring to? I was referring to that dog face motherfucker cum shot. You know, he talks all this shit, dude. He said all these things about me in the media. Yeah, of course they're gonna say things in the media. They don't, they don't say things in my face or in the octagon. He been, you know, he's been saying, he, oh, I wanna fight for the title one seven. I wanna fight Colby, this and that. Dude, the guy quit to the common cold. The guy quit fucking on a weight cut when he had the best professionals that the UFC PI can offer. Millions of dollars put into this guy in marketing and he had the easiest fight in the division, the soy boy Nate Diaz, and he still couldn't make weight. He still make, he missed weight by nine pounds and he's laughing it off like this is a fucking joke. He's a fucking joke. The guy fucking sucks at fighting. He's unprofessional. And I don't want to ever hear that guy's name again. You guys hype him up to be this great giant. The guy couldn't hold my fucking jock strap. Last thing on him, a lot of people seem to want it. They wanted you two to fight. Was that ever presented to you? And would you even accept that now, given what he missed weight by nine pounds? It was never formally presented to me. Uh, you know, we talked about it. it. It was the fight that I wanted. I wanted to derail that hype train. You know, everybody was building him up to be colossal, like he was this great fighter. I saw the quitter in him from the start. I knew he had no cardio. I knew I would expose his gas tank and make him break inside five rounds. The guy quit in three rounds. I mean, what's, it, what's he going to do when he gets porn star cardio and the cardio king for five rounds? So, you know, I was begging to fight that. I was chomping at the bit, but we saw how unprofessional he was. They, they gave him the easiest fight, Nate Diaz, to, to set it up to fight me the next fight, to build this up and make it a spectacle, and he couldn't do it. He's out there laughing, missing weight by nine pounds when he had the best professionals in the world at the UFC PI, so the guy's a clown. I don't want to ever hear that guy's name in this division again. Let that dog, motherf dog face motherfucker rot in 85. Kobe, just uh, la one last one for me. Uh, will you be in attendance at the pay-per-view in Miami? You know, I'm chaos. I'm unpredictable. I may, I may not, you know. I might be with the Mamacita in South Beach that night. I don't know where I'll be. It's tough to say where I'll be tomorrow, you know. I, I can't predict the future, you know. I just, I'm just going to come in here tonight, and hopefully Dana White comes and taps on my shoulder, and I get to sub in and win this world title and bring it back to American soil. Colby, just over here, just going off of that, what do you think about the fight with Jorge and Gilbert Burns? How do you see that going down? You know, I, I could care less about two jobbers in the division fighting each other. You know, I'm here to do big business for the company. You know, I came out to London to, to, to put some sizzle on this event. You know, there was no charisma. No one was talking about this event. Like, I had my buddy, you know, from the Miami Beach Police Department, and uh, he was talking about how all the guys love fighting at the department, and they're like, hey, who's fighting this weekend? What, what's going on? Who's the fight? Like, these guys are avid fight fan lovers, and they had no idea there was even a fight this weekend. That's how irrelevant these guys are. And you guys saw that with my numbers yesterday at my weigh-ins. I did more numbers and, and more clickbait for all you guys than anybody else would have ever done, and, and it's not even close. So, you know, I don't care about anybody else in my division. I just want to fight the biggest and best fights. I want to fight for the title, and I'm the best fighter this, this division's ever seen. And of course, I know you said you wanted to step in tonight, but obviously if that doesn't happen, do you have a, a time frame that you want to get back in there? I'm, I'm, I'm ready to fight tonight. I'm ready to fight tomorrow. I'll be ready to fight next week. You, as you saw, UFC flew me out here on one day's notice, and I was ready to fight either one of these guys in the main event. Actually, I'd rather fight both of them in the main event at the same time. That's, that's how serious I am right now. I'm finally in my physical and mental prime. I feel better than I've ever felt, and I'm ready to go. I was ready to fight these guys on a moment's notice. I'm ready to step in that octagon right now. I got, my mouth I got my mouth guard and my cup in the back. So I'm ready to go right away. Whenever UFC and, and Hunter and Dana and we sit down and we decide what the biggest and best business for this company is, then we'll come back and fight. And you, you, sorry, just last one. And of, of course, you've obviously been matched up. You've, you've fought Usman before, but you haven't fought Leon before. You know, if Leon was to retain the title, how do you see that fight for yourself? I see it looking a lot like 1776, and I see him going home in a pine coffin. Kobe, just in front of you here, um, of course, you know, you've been away from the game for a while. How much are you enjoying being on stage, doing this kind of thing right now, being at the way and seeing the numbers coming in the other day? I love it. You know, this is what I live for. You know, I, I'm a born fighter. You know, this is, this is my life. You know, some guys are part-time fighters, and they only train when they're in training camps. You know, I love fighting. I, I was born to be a fighter. I'm a bred fighter. And, 
I love everything around it, the hype, everything. Just everybody telling me what I can and can't do. All the, all the idiots and clickbait merchants out in the media that, that try and think they can make these fake headlines and this fake news and, and actually think it's true. But the fans know the truth. That's, that's what you saw with these numbers this weekend was the fans, you know, clamoring for me to come back. They want to see the real champ come back. They want to see the people's champ, America's champ, and the most important title of them all, Donald Trump's favorite fighter. Shout out Donald Trump, the 45th president of the United States and the soon to be 47th president of the United States. He would have been the 46th if, if they didn't rig the election, but you know, he's the greatest president in, in American history, and he's going to come back and make America great again. What do you think of his uh, impending arrest next week? More fake news, more, more political sham. You know, they're just weaponizing the DOJ and, and all, all, you know, the FBI to, you know, look at this stuff. They raided his home for no reason. The Mueller report, the, the, the Russian collusion, all, all the hoaxes around him. All they constantly do is, is make up fake news about him. They, they don't have anything on him. They, this is just because they're afraid of him, and they know he's coming back, and he's going to be the president in 2024, and they're just trying to stick something to him, but they got nothing. Finally, uh, for me, um, you know, I, I wanted to ask about, uh, obviously, a lot has happened in your past. I'm sure you're not allowed to talk about some of the stuff that has happened over the last year, but I wanted to ask you in particular, there's, there's guys that were around you at the time, one in particular is Bob Menory, Menory character. Uh, when have you last spoken to him, and has that relate, is that relationship still... Is there, or, or have you guys fallen in? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have a relationship with Bob Menery. The only reason that I had met him was through the Nelk Boys, through Kyle and those guys, because I did the podcast with those guys. So, you know, of course, I, you know, was hanging around the Nelk Boys and those guys, and you know, I, I don't know what to believe with that guy. I think he set me up with what happened, but you know, I'll let that work out the way it does. Uh, I, I ran into. I ironically ran into him at the Super Bowl. He was like there, and I crossed paths with him. He was trying to get a picture. I'm like, no, dude, I'm not taking a picture. We're not friends. We, ne we never were friends. So, you know, I, I just think he's a fake guy and, and uh, you know, no relationship. Colby, just over here. Um, how do you see the main event going today, anyway, between Edwards, uh, Edwards and Usman? Who do you think will win? Um, you know, I, I don't really care. I don't think the fans care. I think the fans wanted to see me in there tonight, and I hope one of them trips on a cord, walk into the cage, so I can step in and fight and, and go make that division great again and, and win that title. Uh, Bilal Mohammed was talking about how maybe him and yourself would be potentially could have been the ultimate uh, fighter coaches. How close was that coming to fruition? Who? Bilal Mohammed is like top five. Never heard of him, man. That's 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 interesting, dude. He's, he's never heard of. Him. I, I I don't I don't. But I don't know prelim fighters, you know, prelim fighters, you know, or prelim fighters, but that wasn't close to happening at all. Never got presented to me, haven't even talked about him. You know, the thing is, is you guys are journalists. You guys need to go out there and do your jobs. Become real journalists. Do the work. Find out what's true and what's not true. Don't believe everything you see on the internet. Colby? Colby, on your far right. Colby? Over here. Oh. Hi. Uh, what's you up, Fair? What's up? How are you? Good, good. How are you? Doing good. Good to uh, see you. Good to see you too. You said you cut 18 uh, pounds. Is that typically what you cut for, for welterweight? Not typically. Usually it's about 13, 14, 15 pounds max. But, you know, I, I was with Donald Trump last week. We, we were at a, you know, a birthday party for Kimberly Goldfoil at Donald Trump's house. And, uh, you know, we were at a party just kind of eating. And, and, you know, I wasn't really thinking that I was going to be the backup fighter. I hadn't heard anything from the UFC. So I was like, you know, I'm going to splurge a little bit. I'm going to I'm going to eat and have this buffet style food and catering and, and not really worry about it. Hopefully I'll get the winner, you know, this summer or whatnot, and, and we'll go from there. But yeah, so I was eating as much as I can. And then Hunter called me Tuesday late night. He said, Hey man, we need you to get on flight Wednesday and you'll get here Thursday and we need you to be the backup fighter just in case anything happens. I said, okay, let's do it, Hunter. I I'm ready. You know, I told you I'm ready. I stay ready. You can call me on a moment's notice. I'm ready to make weight. I'm the ultimate professional. So that's what I do, man. I I this isn't the ultimate feelings championship this is the ultimate fighting championship and you talk about like you wanting big fights big money if you were to coach the ultimate fighter who do you think would be the perfect dance partner for the show for the numbers yeah I think I think me and Connor would have been a great addition to the show I think uh you know and we didn't have to fight at the end of the show we could have just coached the show I think that would have been a great idea you know I think there's there's a lot of hype around that and, and obviously we're two great you know, guys on, on, the, on the mic. So I think it would have been a great opportunity, but you know, I, I just want to fight on the biggest and best fights and, and, and five round title fights. So I'm not looking to go get locked up in a house for six to eight weeks and, and do the filming and the reality. I, I want to fight these guys, you know, in six to eight minutes, you know, in six to eight hours. I, I'm ready to fight on a moment's notice. And it's, sorry, one last one. Uh, it's been a year since you've last fought, but typically it hasn't really affected you. We saw what happened when you fought Robbie Lawler. 
uh, DC was kind of saying that inactivity could harm you, but do you just look at it as time to get better? Absolutely, time to, to just remember why I started this and, and remember what I've came from, you know, and, and be thankful for everything that I have. You know, UFC has changed my life. You know, I was able to, to you know, acquire the American dream, and, I, and, and I'm thankful to the UFC for that. So now we're going to sit back, and I want the biggest and best opportunities that this, this company has to offer, and, and they know that. So they know they're not going to waste my time with prelim fighters or, or unprofessional guys that, you know, like come shots. So, you know, it's been a great time to reflect and, and, and just – that burning desire in my heart is still there, and I want this more than ever. I want to show the world who the greatest fighter in, in the UFC is, and, and that's me, the number one pound for pound, the people's champ, America's champ, Donald Trump's favorite fighter. He's coming back with a vengeance soon. I promise you that, Farah. Thank you. Just, Colby, over it. Um, sorry. Um, just in terms of uh, Kamaru, he alluded to the fact that you were a better opponent and is a better opponent than Leon. Just wanted to know, is Leon Edwards on your level? No, he's not close to my level. I mean, you guys saw what happened when I fought Marty Fake Newsman in Madison Square Garden. I beat him. Every single fan knew that. When I walked out of the Madison Square Garden arena, every fan was like, dude, you easily won that three rounds or two. I thought you won four rounds. The only round we saw him winning was the second round, you know? That was it, you know? So, you know, I clipped him in the fourth round. I won the third round. I won the fifth round. I mean, it, it was clear that I beat him in Madison Square Garden, and it's, and it's clear that I'm the real main event and the real people's champion right now. So... Just because I don't have this fake belt, this Power Rangers belt around my waist, the people know who the, the real champ of this division is, and that's me, and that's why I'm here tonight. Were you surprised that we eventually saw Kamaru lose? Um, not really. You know, we know in the UFC anything can happen at, at any moment. You know, this is as real as it gets. So every second of every fight, you're in danger. You can get knocked out. You can get submitted. That's what makes this the purest sport of them all. So... Man, UFC is a beautiful thing, and, you know, you're never truly out until the last second of the fight. And then just final one for me. Um, in your eyes, what makes you the greatest UFC superstar at the moment? What makes myself the greatest superstar at the moment is just the work I put in, the blue, the blue collar work ethic that I have. You know, just day in and day out, you know, my, my, my diligent, you know, work ethic is just, you know, no one can, can match that. You know, there's a reason I got, I'm the cardio king, and... You know, it's a lot, of, a lot of work in the bedroom and a lot of work in the mats and, and things that go on behind the scene. I don't have to take a picture every time I'm, I'm, I'm training like these fighters. Oh, guys, look, I'm at boxing class. Guys, look, I'm at jiu-jitsu. I'm getting a belt today. No, man, I'm, I'm, putting, I'm putting hard work in silence, and I'm going to let my success make the noise. Colby, over here. Yeah. Hello, mate. First of all, welcome to the UK. Um, if you don't step in the cage tonight, I'm sure you'll be disappointed if you don't, would you, are you going to wait until a title opportunity comes up, or would you be happily fight between then and now, now and then? First off, thank you for welcoming me to the UK. I can't say this has been a welcome place. The food sucks. The weather sucks. The girls definitely suck. But, I mean, I do come from Miami, so I'm the king of Miami, so it's tough to compare to Miami. But, you know, uh, it, it hasn't been an enjoyable trip. The only thing that would cap it off and make it so great is if Dana White comes and taps on my shoulder and I get to sub in tonight and go win that world title. Like if for whatever reason it doesn't happen, would you happily fight in between now and then a title opportunity, or would you just wait it out for the winner of this fight? As you can see, I came here on a day's notice to fight for a world title against either one of these schmucks that are fighting tonight. Either one of them. So I'm ready to fight tomorrow. I was ready to fight yesterday. I'll be ready to fight whenever. I mean, it just it's up to the UFC. You know, this is not a game. This is a business. We're here to make money. We're here to draw money and make this company business money. So whenever they want to Whenever we can come up with the biggest and best fight that makes sense for this business, then, then we'll come back and, and I'll come out and play and I'll put money in all your guys' bank accounts because you guys used to love my name for the clickbait so you guys can put money in your bank accounts. But, and you guys are always talking about fighter pay, fighter pay. Well, what, if you guys care so much about fighter pay, why aren't you guys paying the fighters? Because you're profiting off the fighters, but you're not paying the fighters. So I don't want to hear you guys talking about fighter pay anymore. All right, thanks, Ryan. I hope your UK experience gets a little bit better, man. I appreciate it, brother.